today I'm going to speak on the guru. Guru is a Sanskrit word that refers to someone who removes the darkness of ignorance, in short, a teacher. We've all had gurus in life, including mentors, coaches, educators, parents, elders, and so on. We turn to them because they have knowledge that we don't, and because they are willing to share their knowledge out of love, duty, or even financial gain. Though some of our gurus are experts in their field, it doesn't mean that they know everything in that field. In short, they still have something of value to share. Spiritual knowledge is no different. There are many individuals who have spiritual experience and understanding that we can learn from. We may even call them my guru, which is not much different than a martial artist referring to his master or grandmaster. In such cases, it is an honorific. The challenge arises when a guru is perceived as a God-man or woman, as a perfect human being, self-realized and worthy of worship. Yogic texts describe the guru-disciple relationship as the perfect relationship, and through wholehearted worship of the guru, an individual can become self-realized. Well, before you pack your bags and run off to an ashram to serve such a guru, it is better to observe for a little while and be sure of what you're really getting into. Some of these so-called God people have been known to manipulate others for sex, for wealth, to gain status, and to glorify themselves. So how can you know if someone is enlightened and worthy of your undivided worship, especially if you are not self-realized? Is the number of followers your litmus test? (laughs) Well, film and music celebrities can have millions of fans. Will they help you to become adored by others? Probably not. So what are some of the indications? Obviously, if you have some profound spiritual experiences around such a person, that's something to take note of. Is it enough to offer yourself completely to them? Well, you might want to look a little bit deeper. From my experience, here are some of the indications that you might actually be in contact with a genuine self-realized being. First, They must be very loving and extend their love to all equally, regardless of circumstances. In fact, love and compassion should be their main characteristic. They should be service-oriented, kind, full of wisdom, and have the awareness that they are merely vehicles for the divine power that moves within them. That is, they're humble. Their lives abound in every heartful virtue. They must be able to guide people toward yoga, the profound awareness of man's union with the self, and want nothing in return. To this effect, they may seem unpredictable, even eccentric, while dealing with people's egos. That is, they may not always follow social conventions. The ego is a clever character. However, (laughs) it squirms under unpredictability. In any case, a true guru's behavior, though perhaps challenging at times, always uplifts the disciple, if not in the short term, then in the long run. How much you receive often depends on your level of discernment and devotion. The guru should be lighthearted and have a good sense of humor. They can also be fearsome when dealing with ignorance, especially the sort that brings harm to oneself and others. They have no need for a following of devotees. They don't go out of their way to promote themselves in the media or enrich themselves and tend to give more attention to those who truly seek liberation. In fact, they are indifferent to the attractions of the physical body, money, fame, and recognition. They often have unsought supernormal powers, yet pay little notice to them. You can feel an extremely powerful field of energy called Shakti in Sanskrit emanating from them even though they are not physically proximate. This energy might best be called the bliss of profound silence. It seems to stimulate deep transformation in others without a word being spoken. Their minds are still, and you can see it in their body language, even though they may appear very animated. If their minds are not still, how can they help still the minds of others? (laughs) 
If such a guru initiates you, which is called Shaktipat, a bond of love tends to manifest effortlessly. This bond has little to do with the guru's persona, intellect, or emotions. It serves the disciple in recognizing his or her divinity. In fact, the physical guru is called the causal guru or secondary guru. This guru initiates, teaches, and guides the disciple. The primary or action guru is the indwelling self. It brings the disciple's yogic practices to fruition, and it is often called Kundalini Shakti, Divine Energy, or the Great Self. The secondary guru can bring the disciple to the divine waters of the self, but the primary guru offers the wisdom and courage to drink from those waters. As you can imagine, causal gurus of this nature are extremely rare. When a causal guru bears such signs, they are probably living in a constant union with the great self, even as they appear to move in the world we all know. I say probably because an unenlightened person can never know for sure. In other words, it takes one to know one. The true guru exists in the space of the higher heart at the pinnacle of the crown mudra. It's the indwelling guru that draws the causal guru and disciple together, manifesting as a pull of the heart, a deep longing, and not an ego-based desire. I once met a German fellow who had served as the right-hand man of a famous dervish, a Sufi master who he believed to be enlightened. After 15 years of service, the fellow left the fold. Why? He finally realized that although the dervish was brilliant and had incredible charisma, he didn't have a pure loving heart. The fellow was brokenhearted for years. I told him that he was greatly blessed by this experience. He learned a wonderful lesson, just how important love is on the spiritual path. Even at the time of death, not everyone receives such an awakening. In other words, we try our best to find the best teachers. What we receive from them is absolutely perfect for what our soul needs at the time. There's no reason to be discouraged. If you develop great devotion for a particular teacher, only later to discover you've been manipulated in some manner, understand that the great self dwells within all beings. It's your expectations that breed suffering. Devotion never goes to waste. If you don't have an enlightened spiritual guide, look within. The Guru is always there in your heart of hearts. Simply learn to listen. Thank you for listening today. Namaste.